Hello and welcome. Welcome to Notebook LM, a Google initiative. AI tool that uh, can do a lot of things. Notice these are my notebooks and I've got quite a few of them. I guess I've been using this since 2023. Just about a year, but a lot has changed since then. Let me go into a new notebook. Going to create one of a podcast of a Google slide presentation. Now, this isn't very fast, so bear with me. It usually takes a bit more time than other AI tools, but it's worth the wait. So here we are. Uh, let's uh, see what we can do here. We're going to go to Google Slides. Notice the options here. You can add a website and uh, get information from that. A YouTube video, copy text, and Google Docs. Notice there are no limits right now to the source, so that's a great opportunity for you to try this out. I'm going to go into Google Slides. And then notice these are my slides. I've already connected Notebook. Well, it's actually connected because it's a Google initiative. And I have a Gmail account, which is all you need. So going to go into this one that I created yesterday, going to insert it. Here we go. Now, as I said, this will take time. Generally, to start it off is pretty fast. I had to refresh the page, and that was the reason why it took so long. But in, oh, that was fast. It's getting faster and faster, so no complaints on my end. Notice what you can do here. Lots of things. Got a table of contents, briefing, timeline, anything for your notebook guide. But we're going to take a look, and you can also add questions, of course, and get answers. These are some suggested questions. You can also use your own in the view chat. <laughs> That's where it happens. But we're going to go into deep dive conversation to host in English. Now, this can't be changed at this time, but I'm sure it will in the very near future. Notice here is an explanation, audio overview, uh, and everything that... Uh, you can have here. So let's go into generate and see what happens. I'm so excited because I know that it's absolutely amazing. And what I love most about it, besides the fact that it takes all the information in and just uh, makes it even more exciting, is the fact that it's so positive. I love the positive attitude that comes with the podcast that's generated. So again, this will take time, so you don't need to stick around. You can go about your business and then come back. And here it is. So let me play it for you. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're diving deep into, well, deep dives specifically, how to design engaging online courses for teaching English as a second language and get this with AI. So we're looking at TESOL online with AI, week two from this recent online presentation. And honestly, it does not disappoint, especially if you're feeling, shall we say, a tad overwhelmed with all this new tech. Oh, absolutely. It's like, where do you even begin, right? Yeah. Like this presentation really seems to get that, though, which is refreshing. Totally. Like, right off the bat, they acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is time. Teachers are busy people. Hmm. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> Between lesson planning, grading, and, you know, actually teaching, finding time to learn a whole new set of tools, AI or otherwise, it's tough. And not just learning the tools themselves, but figuring out how to actually integrate them effectively into your lessons. And then there's the whole getting the students on board thing. And that's where the emotional side comes in, right? Yeah. Because for a lot of educators, especially those who might not consider themselves tech savvy, AI can feel kind of intimidating. Like, are we going to be replaced by robots? It's the fear of the unknown. But this presentation does a great job of validating those feelings like, hey, it's OK to feel overwhelmed. But then it goes a step further and says, we're here to guide you through it, which is exactly what you want to hear. Right. Hand holding, but in a good way. 
like supportive hand-holding. Exactly. So speaking of guidance, this TESOL Online with AI course actually runs from October 1st to 31st next year, 2025. And week two, which is what we're focusing on, is jam-packed with hands-on activities and what they call, and I love this, star activities and resources. Oh, I saw those. They're like, if you only have time for one thing this week, make it this. Exactly. And the range is pretty impressive. I mean, they cover practical tech skills, like how to manage your browsing data, which, let's be honest, we could all use a refresher on, right? Totally. It's like... All right. So that's um, the podcast. Notice the summary here. And let me take you to the actual source. So the source is um, right here. Okay, so I'm going to take you through it so you get an idea of uh, what's here and a little bit of how they used it. And I suggest that you do this. Uh, take a look at the uh, podcast and then go through uh, this. Okay, let's uh, do that now. So um, here we are. I'm just going to go through the slides. Um, the introduction wasn't added, as you noticed. There's also a video, but they did go into this teaching online with AI and what's involved. And um, here's the overview of the presentation. All right. So there's the workflow, uh, completion progress, where you can see your progress, develop an online course. There's a video on that. And then uh, you choose a number for your course and then you simply uh, are enrolled in that course as the manager so that you can go in and make changes. And as you can see on the left, there is one change that the participant made and then you star the activities. You'll be using these activities since this is uh, TESOL, Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. These are the screen recorders and of course support you get through uh, notice uh, the support form rather than the messaging system. Uh, this is a tool that I developed, TESOL Online with AI, it's the chat GPT, GPT, uh, and it generates information for you. And here is a video on how to add prompts, some information, instructions on prompts, and then how to ask for codes for Moodle. So you can simply go into the tools source code and then just paste the code and that makes it look so much better, especially if it's a table such as this one. These are some of the tools that I recommend. I'm sure there are others and I'd love to hear about them. So feel free to add them in the comment box below. And then uh, there's an explanation of some of these. Um, participants will be using Google Notebook, KLM and Magic School as well as some other tools in week three when they uh, generate their activities within the Moodle course. This is um, how to set a border on your table cells. <laughs> if you use um, a code, you don't need to do this because it'll be added by the chat GPT tool. But this is how you do it in case you need to. Uh, a little bit about images. These are free image generators, AI generated. You need to learn how to resize, unless you use a code, of course, and then it'll be resized in the uh, source code that you pasted. So some tips on how to do that, which we need, because we don't want to see a huge, and definitely our students don't want to see a huge image that just takes over the whole page, and you lose the information that's there. You can also embed with Generico in a Moodle course, and. Uh, you don't need to embed YouTube or Vimeo because they're automatically embedded. But sometimes you need to add the LMS, the uh, HTML. With um, tools such as Loom, you need to go into the source code under tools and simply paste the code. Uh, also remember that if you're not embedding and you're sharing a link, make sure that it opens in a new window. And if you're not seeing the editor in a Moodle message area, go into advanced and you'll see it there. And that's basically it. So listen to the podcast and compare. Let's go back into the podcast and uh, thank <laughs> uh, Notebook LM, a Google initiative for doing this. So thank you for watching.